Hello, my name is Michael Savoldi, and a short time back, I had a discussion about uniform soul thickness, UST, as it relates to the soul plane. These are two terms rarely used in the farrier science industry or in horseshoeing, and yet they have a great deal of meaning behind them. Uh, once they're understood, they can be a great aid to helping a horse's foot uh, and, and a goal to making it as healthy as we possibly can. So in this section, we will talk about a toe bend in the sole plane. Now the sole plane can bend and it can, uh, because the foot is very flexible, it, we can have upward bends or downward bends within the sole plane. But before we start the lecture <clears throat> or this discussion, I would like to talk about setting goals. Goals are very important because they bring people together. If you, if your farrier is working with a veterinarian and they have goals, they have things to work towards and work towards together. Working with a horse owner or a trainer with goals, all of this benefits the horse and everyone's looking forward to um, helping the horse. So the first part of my this goal that I think about a lot is a distortion-free hoof capsule. The hoof capsule is extremely flexible. It twists and bends. And as a farrier, I need to learn how to, or teach myself, how to control those because they all have detrimental effects within the foot. Another goal would be a level sole plane. As the sole plane distorts, like I said, the sole plane can bend up or can bend down. Uh, it can twist, the whole capsule can twist. But as, the, as those actions occur, major damages can take place within the capsule and especially to the P3 bone. We have the distal, board, the distal phalanx, the P3 bone. So that's uh, like the last bone in a horse's foot. The distal phalanx sometimes could be referred to as the coffin bone. Uh, there's several names for it, but it's important that we keep the distal phalanx, if we can, above the proximal border of the white line. Uh, that's extremely important for hoof health and for uh, circulation. Uh, if the elevation in the bone of the bone is proper, uh, properly maintained, then the foot will ha be nourished quite well and it'll have a stronger foot on the horse. And then another, our final goal for today would be the P3 as close to a level plane as possible. This, is con this can be controversial because a lot of studies have been done about the plane of the P3 bone. And they find that the majority of horses have a positive palmar angle. Well, that's true. The studies were, did a lot of good work in those studies. Unfortunately, the studies uh, interpreted it as maybe horses should have a positive palmar angle. Well, just because it's a positive palmar angle doesn't mean it's necessarily a good thing for the horse because pathology to the P3 bone can be based on the plane of the P3 bone. All right, now we can uh, start with some very simple anatomy because we would like to explain the sole plane and uniform sole thickness. So we can start with a cadaver limb that was purchased at a local rendering plant uh, for demonstration purposes only and for research. And uh, this foot has been trimmed to the sole plane. So you're looking at the actual foot of this horse at this moment in time. We can remove the distal border of the wall. Well, distal simply means the furthest away from the body. And we can look at the leading edge of the sole where it interfaces with the white line in the hoof wall. Our next step would be to remove the hoof capsule and expose the sense of a lamina and the soft tissue. This tissue is soft and it's delicate and it needs to be treated with respect. If any pain is going to come from the body, it's going to be from sensitive tissue. Uh, and so it needs to be uh, really well understood and taken care of. 
Now, one thing to note is right here, here's our sensitive lamina. We're looking at figure three. Where the sensitive lamina ends, the sole begins. And if you notice that the top line of this sole is, is uh, distortion free, it's level. It happens to be, it happens to fall in line with the uniform sole thickness. And so the bottom or the distal border, furthest away from the body, is also level. Those are critical points in our discussion. Here we have uh, the sole body with the P3 bone uh, resting on top. Now, soft tissue has been removed, so the bone is just a little bit lower than it normally would be um, because of the removal of the sole dermis and some of the other soft tissue. But what the point of here is, we're talking, we're defining the term or the word uniform sole thickness. And if you look at that, uh, the sole, it appears to be uniform in its vertical depth. They're never really truly uniform, but they look very close. They will be extremely close unless there's damage to the distal border of the sensitive lamina. And then the white line will remodel. And so you may have a, a different vertical depth area uh, measurement in the area of white line remodeling. The next thing we can show is the sole plane. So looking at the sole body, we can say that the sole body's vertical depth doesn't, it doesn't go along with the term uniform sole thickness because the sole body can be thick or thin. It like skin. Skin, be, skin can be thick in some areas and thin in other areas, things like that. Or if the sole body is under stress, it can have thin spots. But where the sole connects to wall, UST, is extremely reliable. It sets up a good base for, for stability for the horse. The sole plane. This here is a take home message. The leading edge of the sole represents the sole plane. A horizontally planed hoof capsule simply means that the foot is standing on a level ground surface. The ground, hope that the ground would be horizontally planed with a foot standing. This is a very good base for the horse to stand on. It's very good for, for support for the horse and for stability for the horse. Let's not forget that the horse feels its feet and it relies on its, the information that reads off of the bottom of its foot for its stability and its movement. And then we have the proximal border of the sole plane is distortion free. This is really your take home message because the sole plane can become distorted, uh, uneven, unlevel. And as farriers, we need to learn how to level the sole plane and maintain a level sole plane. Now, here's a, a front right foot. Now, I dissected this foot many years ago. I, I really don't know the number of years, 35 maybe. Um, and I can't really remember if it was, uh, I think it was stillborn from my memory. But it gave us a chance to do some research and evaluate and see what's happening. And so we can do the same trimming protocol that we just showed you with our anatomy discussion. And as you can see, that this, it has uniform sole thickness. After we get through all those layers, um, I wouldn't try to trim this foot down to the sole plane immediately. You have to let that adjust and dry out and things like that. But it does, it will produce a level, a um, uniform sole thickness uh, as far as its sole plane goes. So what's interesting about this foot is that it is a distorted sole plane. So here we have a newborn, a stillborn that was born with a distorted sole plane. Now, after a while of walking on it, that bend that you see in that sole plane may just level off. Two weeks down the road, three weeks down the road, it may pick up another bend. So it's very flexible. And that's what I mean is we have to learn how to control bends in the sole plane. If you notice the bend, the wall at the toe area of this foot, right in this area, it has 
right in this area, you notice we have a little backward bend to our hoof capsule. So it's born, and this is a front foot. So it's born with a little bit of a bull nose to it. But if this horse walks on it, that may straighten out and that bend will, will go in a different direction. Now let's look at a hind foot of the same horse, the stillborn. Everything's the same here as we saw in the previous picture, except I can now do the same trimming protocol. And look, it's amazing. <laughs> it exposes a uniform sole thickness. And what's interesting about this is it is a level sole plane. It hasn't had a chance for forces to, to attack it and twist it all around. So they can be born with a level sole plane or they can be born with a twisted sole plane or a distorted sole plane. This happens throughout their life. That can change in two weeks. It could be a three-year-old and have different uh, movements to it. That is because the hoof capsule is flexible and is subject to the lower loads or the demands that are put upon it. All right, now we can look at an upward bend in the sole plane. This horse has been trimmed with length of wall in the heel. So it has elevated the capsule into a, a, a forward pitch that also will change or alter the plane of the P3 bone. It will increase the palmar angle of the P3 bone according to the radiograph. So we have to be aware of the effects that length of wall in the heel can do to a horse. But what we're talking about here is distortion to the capsule. So the two things we see happening here is if I were to come up here and press downward on this foot, press downward on this foot, the toe arch or the, the sole plane in the toe can flatten. This stabilizes the heel, or the, the um, sole plane in the heel, it stabilizes it so it can't really move. The space in here will allow this to push and fill in the space, which causes an upward bend. This is what causes your sheared heel. One of the causes of a sheared heel. So if we were to look at the hoof capsule that was removed off of this foot, we now can see all of these wrinkly lines in the toe area. These are all because of the compressive load that's on the toe and the toe is bending upward or causing this, the, the load is causing the, the toe to stabilize in that position. And so now the tissue in the wall is being packed up or upset. So that's creating some of those wavy lines. So when you look, that's one indicator of a foot that has an upward bend in the toe if it's developing those wavy lines. The other indicator is if the bone is pushing into the sole, causing a, the sole to sink or drop. That would also create those little wavy lines in your toe area. We can trim the foot to the sole plane that will horizontally plane our hoof capsule. Now it gives us a chance to evaluate the bends in the foot. Wherever there's daylight, there's a bend. So we see a little bit of a daylight here in the toe, but we also see daylight in the heel, in this area, in the heel. So when you see that on the foot, if you're trimming to the sole plane, and believe me, heels, you need instruction on how to trim heels because you have to learn on what the tissue in the seed of corn is telling you before you start taking too much heel off. Or you can get into soft tissue that hasn't dried down to the moisture line yet. And so that can be a little sensitive for the horse as far as pressure goes. The tissue's too soft. It's, drier tissue can maintain more uh, sensitivity. Uh, soft tissue is more sensitive than drier tissue. But if we look at, this may come out in a, in a short period of time. Maybe on this horse, as soon as the horse stood on its foot, that may level to the horizon or it may take a little bit of time. I've had some horses where the bend was so steep that it took three shoeings to come out. So you just let that bend, leave it alone, 
and it'll slowly you have to give it a place to you have to give bends a place to move to like a horseshoe if you have a bend in a horseshoe you have to give it a spot a place for it to move into same with trying to level an unlevel soul plane now if we look at this the um the heel dissected out of this foot you can see here's our length of wall the excess tissue has been removed exposing the, the epidermal sole here's our length of wall so this length of wall on this foot is causing the internal structures of the foot to look to do this and that's what's causing a lot of the stress that you're seeing in the toe if we want to look at pathology to bone, we now can go to the skeletal parts up here at the top of our page. And the positive palmar angle is causing pedalostitis in the toe and the bone is demineralizing. When we horizontally plane a P3 bone, now we can get a pathology grade based on how much bone is missing. Uh, so there's a lot of, of uh, verification here telling us that raising heels destroys bone due to pilostitis. And then another thing we should talk about is skeletal stance, addressing the plane of the P3 bone. So we're all concerned about how the horse is standing on his foot. I'm primarily concerned on how the horse is standing on its bone because body weight descends down the skeleton. We, I've seen, been, I've been in many discussions on how the foot should land. That's the, what's important to me is how the P3 bone is landing on top of the sole, because that's where you get damage. That's how drop soles occur. It's not landing equally on top of the sole. Having unequal length of wall in the heels, one heel longer on one side than the other, can alter how the P3 bone is landing on top of the sole and can cause a lot of damage. So the more horizontally plane the hoof capsule can be on the, when it lands on the ground, well, when, when the body weight starts to descend over, it's more important, then the less problems you can have according to how the bone is landing on the top of the, the sole. An upright foot. This foot, is, uh, this foot has been trimmed flat. Make a note of that. This foot has been trimmed flat the way we've been taught to trim horses, leaving length of wall in the heel, moving the foot back. So stance has a, a little bit to do. The trim has some little bit to do with stance. The more heel, then the foot will want to stand back. Now, when we trim to the sole plane, we horizontally plane the hoof capsule. But the stance on this foot will most likely migrate forward a little bit and put a little more load, distribute the load a little more over the rear half of the foot where all the cushion is. We have a digital cushion in that area and a frog. That's why the foot has those, is to absorb concussion. And so if we trim a foot with heel, we're pushing the bone, we're, we're losing the advantage of the shock absorption of the heel. So by lowering the heels, we're picking up the advantage of, of what nature has put there and we're taking less stress off of the toe. But as you can see, this foot has a distorted sole plane in the toe area. The, the message here is the forward movement of the sole and the toe is bending upward in the toe area. Let's go back to skeletal stance. Now, which, which foot or limb do you think this animal would prefer to stand on for comfort? Would we want him standing on the toe of its bone or would we want him standing more horizontally planed and in alignment with the internal structures, more in alignment with the horizon? It makes a huge difference. This can affect the attitude of a horse. Put a horse up with heels some some breeds are very sensitive to this, like your upright pastern horses. Put heel on an upright pastern horse and then put a wedge pad on it. After a few shoeings, you may find that that horse is resisting you picking up that foot. It's fighting you. It doesn't want you to pick up the foot. The reason for that is, is because in its mind, it knows you're hurting it and it doesn't want to be around you.
It may not even want you to catch it. So pay attention to horse behavior when you walk up to it and then look at how the foot has been trimmed. That's critical. But also we need to start studying and concentrating on skeletal stance. It's very beneficial for the animal, makes them happier, makes them want to work harder and play harder. Now we can look at a before trim and it's a level trim on the same foot that we just were evaluating. If we should trim to the sole plane, we have a space. The toe is not touching the ground. How many of you have trimmed a foot and then you look at the bottom of the foot and the toe quarters are longer than the toe? In other words, the toe is lower than the toe quarter. I'm going to answer that question for you. Because what happens, your first reaction is to take your rasp and rasp down the toe quarters till you're even with the sole at the toe area. And what happens? You may feel soft soles developing in that area. You may see pink developing or even blood developing. Well, here's the answer why. Because there is a distorted sole plane. It's bending in an upward fashion. So if I were to try to trim this foot level, If I were to try, to, if I trim this foot level, look how far I have to go into the sole plane in order to get it even with the bend. So I hope this is another take home message for you because uh, we're all trained to trim a level foot. But in this case, what, the sole, what trimming to the sole plane has exposed is a distorted sole plane in the toe area. Now let's think about steep sidewalls. You notice that this bend is coming up. When the sole plane bends upward in the toe, what will that do to your capsule? It will narrow, the, it puts a deeper arch into your foot and it will narrow your capsule, It'll bring the walls closer to sensitive tissue or soft tissue. That's guaranteed side bone on a horse. Straight sidewalls with a lot of vertical depth to the sidewall, you're going to most likely see major side bones. Um, Horses get side bone, but the major side bones that you find are usually in draft horses and warm bloods because if they have these steep walls with a, a sole migrating in inward, then they're in trouble. If that, if you could get the bend out of that sole, that means that area will straighten up. This area will, if this bend comes down, what happens to our side walls? They have to move out. The arch will move down, the side walls will move out, and there'll be a better space between the sensitive lamina and the um, uh, hoof wall. So these are just little, little things that are very hard to notice, but we can help horses if we just start to understand and pay more attention to distorted hoof capsules. And what's, what's the adverse effect to this? is this bone, pilostitis. You notice all of this is bone is missing. It, this is not original bone. It's all demineralized. So let's see if we can answer why is this bone demineralizing in this direction. Here's the bone we're talking about. If you look at the bone in the upper left-hand corner, it says a full toe. Well, in reality, if you notice right here that this bone had a little pilostitis. Pathology can be based on the plane of the bone. So this bone was in a, a very slight positive palmar angle. So we're losing bone due to that. This bone was in a much greater positive palmar angle. And how do we explain this? Is we can put the sole body here and, and evaluate the sole body. Remember we said it had straight, this, this foot had straight sidewalls. What else? It has very steep arch, medial and lateral arch. You notice how steep it is here. Has deep commissures. Look at the, the depth of how deep our commissures are. That means very steep, very deep commissures. So it's a narrow foot. That'll be a narrow foot with narrow heels. But why is the bone demineralizing? That has a lot to do with the positive palmar angle with low elevation. We said 
that the the P3 bone we would like to see above the proximal border of the white line. Now the soft tissue has been remodeled, has 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 been removed. So this bone is lower than it normally would be. But as that bone descends into the hoof capsule, you get pick up, see this displacement of the sole here? So all of this is starting, the sole is starting to wrap around the edge of the bone when it is displaced like that. That pressure puts uh, on the edge of the P3 bone. Pelostitis simply means inflammation to bone. And so now our bone is, will become inflamed and it will start to um, disappear, go away, bone damage. So the curvature in this bone, in that direction, in the orientation, medialaterally, is due to poor elevation and a positive palmar angle. It's getting it too close to the top of the sole. It's not allowing it a little freedom of space there. Because a horizontally plain bone and a, and a horse with a good arch, there's a little distance between the, the bone and the sole body. That's a healthy thing. And it allows room for the bone to move through, through forces before it bottoms out onto the um, top of the sole. Now let's look at this bone, the same foot on a lateral view. So again, this foot was a level trim, the way we've all been taught. We're trying to move into more modern farrier science, advanced farrier science. So let's bring our farrier science into a more modern stage. We need to get more people researching the internal structures of the foot. So trim to the sole plane, you notice that the foot is not touching. The toe is not touching the ground. The heel is not touching the ground. So does this mean that this foot has a upward bend in the toe? Does it mean that it has an upward bend in the heel? Well, I would question the bend, I would question the space in the heel area. It's obvious. All the signs are there for the upward bend in the toe. Look here. Look at our toe right here. It's showing us sinking this little right here. That little portion of the foot right there tells us that the bone is sinking into the foot. This tells us that this is being pushed out, that the, that the sole is being pushed out. Two signs of a, a drop sole in the toe area. But the heel is different. If this horse should stand a little bit forward, then this daylight would disappear and this bend would then be even greater than what we see. So it takes evaluation. You just can't look at a foot and say, oh, there's a bend in the heel. No, you have to learn, you have to study and learn this, what you're looking at before you can evaluate um, the, the distortion that we're seeing there. So I'm going to do our dissecting protocol. Look at the top line of the, of the sole body or of, of the sole plane. And it looks fairly level, except at this point, it's level right through. This area, don't let this area confuse you. It's not uniform sole thickness because the distal border of the sensitive lamina is remodeling and this is keratinized tissue. So by looking at this, I know that the bone is pressing into the sole. You'd probably have separation of white line in your foot. If you see that, then that means that the sole is being pulled away from the wall. And when the distal border of the sensitive lamina is damaged, it will remodel and increase, the keratinized tissue will increase in its vertical depth. But this definitely, if we follow the top line of the sole plane to this point, we can see where it's bending upward. So there's definitely a sole bend here. The marks that you, that dark mark that you see on the sole plane is pressure from a nail. Now, when nails get close, they will stain the pressure will stain tissue. It's seepage of, of tissue, and it'll stain the tissue. If you look just a little bit above, right here where the sensitive lamina is, you notice that some of that is turning white. That soft tissue is starting to keratinize. If it gets hard and heavy, it will actually put a crease in the P3 bone. So nails can be dangerous. We have to concentrate on our nail placement because if they get too close to sensitive tissue, they can actually destroy bone or damage bone. 
That doesn't happen very often, but it's, it's something that can happen. Now, let's go back to a level trim means that you would, that you, your trim, in, no, excuse me, let me start over, I'm getting ahead of myself. A level trim means that you would trim into the soul plane. So we're thinning tissue. So when you try to trim those toe quarters out to make the foot level with the bends, you're thinning sole, you're thinning tissue. So caution should be taken in that point. And then we can again take it another level here by looking at our distorted sole plane. Let's look internally at what it's doing to the foot. We can recognize the bend. The bend is wrapping around the toe the sole body is wrapping around the toe, causing major damage to the to the P3 bone, right in this area here. So drop soles or bone pressing into the sole body is very detrimental. Elevation, it's low elevation. Now I mentioned a horizontally playing P3 bone is positive for the thing, but not all horses have it, and sometimes it may be impossible to achieve. But you can use uh, orthotics or whatever to try to get that bone as close to a horizontal plane. But you may, you may radiograph a flat-footed horse, and the whole bone will be horizontally plane. That's understandable. But because it's low elevation, there can be major damage done to the bone. So you can have a horizontally plane P3 bone, but too low in its elevation, and that can be, ca be causing damage to the bone. Another thing I'd like to talk about in this slide is, well, let's go to the next slide and see our review here. Let's do a little review. So one, what's causing this, this damage, damage to the, to the soul, to the uh, soul plane and to the bone is a positive palmar angle. The second thing is poor elevation. The third thing is pathology grade will increase when raising the heel. Now I'd like to, something just came to my mind and I'd like to talk about club-footed horses. You see when the bone demineralizes, the hoof capsule gets short that could produce a club looking foot. It may not be the part of the foot that everybody's talking about. It could be, a, some club feet could simply be a horse with a little too much wall length in the heel and a, demi and a demineralized bone in the toe causing the toe to be short. So there's a lot of things to be said about club feet. So I wish when we do lectures, when people do lectures, I wish they would do a little more homework to try to establish everything they can, can come up with before, uh, do their homework, before they present information that may be a little bit short on detail. I'm constantly trying to improve the detail. I learn every day. My lectures improve through my learning. So, and I don't mind that. For a researcher, one of the greatest things that I can do is be wrong. That's a blessing to me because it eliminates a step and puts me another cl step closer to, to being correct. So now we can simply look at pathology to the soul. And so we have the pathology is associated with palmar, positive palmar angle. The soul body and P3 will degrade uh, when raising the heel. That's the problem. So in this picture, in the picture on the left upper corner, you can see the positive palmar angle is pulling all of this tissue away from the wall. If we look at the picture just below it, you can see the curvature developing in the, the bone pre where the bone is pressing into the sole. You can see the curvature that's a developing and why the pressure is being put on the P3 bone. If we look at the foot over he right here at the spot or the foot to your right, um, the large photograph, the main photograph, you can see a lot of damage occurring through this area and into this area. You can see the damage here. All of this comes, this is, comes from a P3 bone that's not quite uh, on a horizontal plane with the, with the sole. 
and it's uh, a little bit in a, it's listing to that side a little bit, causing more damage to the soul body and to the P3 bone. So let's talk, this lecture is getting a little long, so I won't spend much time on the downward bend, your bull nose foot, but primarily a bull nose foot is created by a deep arch, a deep toe arch. The deeper this toe arch is, you notice how it can crowd the space between the bone and the soul, soul body. So the deeper the toe arch is, then trimming this foot short isn't going to change this. This toe needs a little bit of a, 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 a discussion in order to, I'm running out of time. But if we look, this foot's been trimmed pretty level, but according to our pretty good. There's plenty of wall here to protect the foot, but it's not the toe that we're used to seeing. So our, we will attempt to trim this foot flatter, to trim more toe off this foot. And that's a mistake because we're not, we're not doing much for this when we do. This needs to migrate out to come out. So we have to be careful about how we trim toes with a horse with a deep, like hind feet, horse, a hind foot with a deep toe arch. Um, they're hard for us to read because our eye is accustomed to seeing that flat toe arch and the, the flat trim in the toe. So use caution when we're trimming these, the foot with the bend backwards. Put these horses into heavy use or exercises. A lot of times the, that load can increase the depth of, our, of the toe arch and pull the toe even further backwards, giving it stronger bull nose. And then we can look at the bone that's found in that in this foot. If you notice, our bone has a bull nose. Um, when the bone, when the hoof wall gets close to bone, it can um, create uh, irritation to the bone, inflammation, and then it can start to degrade bone and move. This is losing. Um, the original bone is starting to demineralize. Sometimes on a radiograph where you see a um, a very heavy bump here. If you look at the bone below it, it's not original bone, it's demineralized bone. And here you can see a, the, the bone is an arch structure, the P3 bone. I'm looking at the bone on the right. It is, a, P3 bone is an arch structure, but as time passes, they lose their edge. The, the leading edge will demineralize. It's just a naturally occurring thing in most horses, aged horses. And so that loses its arch, its natural arch. And so the sole gets, will become flatter and flatter. You see the sole can model to the shape of the bone or the bone can model to the shape of the sole. It depends on different scenarios. So over time, pedalostitis will degrade the edge of the bone and the arch structure will become flat and weakened. Let's go back to our goal setting. A reminder for our goal setting. One, we're all trying to achieve a distortion-free hoof capsule. Two, our goal should be try to establish a level sole plane. Why is that? That's good for bone health. We protect the bone by having a level sole plane, protect it as much as we can. Our third is P3 above the proximal border of the white line. You see, um, that's good for circulation. That's good for bone health and circulation. It's good for protecting the, the solar surface of the P3 bone. If we can keep that bone up for protecting the leading edge of the P3 bone. So elevation, these three, these three or four, three, I guess. Oh no, there's one more I'm going to add. All of these have been based through many years of dissecting and looking at feet that have horses that have def decent feet, feet that are fairly free of problems, that are functioning well. That's what our three, uh, our goal settings are based on. So a P3 bone as close to a level plane as possible. And if you notice in our, in our photo down here in the corner, this bone is in a positive, a strong positive palmar angle. It's sinking into the the sole body causing demineralization to bone. So, and it will have the distorted toe that we saw. It's not a level sole, well, the sole plane, remember, had an upward bend. Our sole plane had an upward bend in the toe. So all of this could be avoided 
if we could start thinking about setting some goals that we all could work with. Goals work good when we're working with, two vet with a veterinarian and you're on the same page. Goals work good when you're working with the, with the owner and the tra trainer because they're all working to achieve the same goal. It's a team. We're all working to achieve the same goal. Well, I'd like to thank you. Uh, I, this lecture went just a little bit longer than I really wanted it to. Uh, so much information in so short a time. So again, I thank you. I hope you will enjoy these and I'll look forward to doing a few more. Take care.